Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we're looking at how to name this organic compound, this one we have here. And as you can see, this compound here is in its condensed state, all right? What we have here is called the condensed formula of an organic compound, all right? Now, when it comes to naming this, this compound here, uh, to make it easy for us, our first task would be to express this condensed formula in its structural form. All right. If you can rewrite this condensed formula in the structural form, it becomes easier to name the compound. So let's rewrite this compound in its structural form. So how do we start? We are starting from the left hand side. Here we have CH3. So I'll just come back, come down here, write CH3. That becomes C. That's C here. So I'm having CH3. That becomes one, two, three. All right. So I'm done with CH3. Next thing I see here is CI2. All right, so CI2, I'm now having from here, becomes C, I, this is I1, and then I, this is I2. All right, so this one done. Next up, I can see CH2, that becomes C, H1, and then H2. Okay, next up, I can see CBR2, that becomes C, Going up, I have BR, that's 1. Again, I have BR, that's 2. Okay. Next up, I have CH2. That becomes, from here, I'm having C. I'm having H. I'm having H. That's CH2. Okay. Going back to my condensed formula, I'm having CH. So, it becomes, from here, I'm having C, H up. Or you can still take this H down. Same thing. Here I can see, after this I can see a double bond, so double bonded to C, then double bonded again. So it becomes double bonded to carbon, double bonded to, from here I can see CCL. That becomes carbon there, C, and then opposite I have CL. Again, this upward CL here can still be written downwards, and it's the same thing. Alright, so moving on, I'm now having, next thing I have here. Is now C and then CH3 twice. That becomes from here C. Since I have CH3 twice, I will take one upwards, CH3, then take one downwards. That becomes CH3, which becomes CH3 twice. And then finally, I now have here, which is CH3, that becomes CH upward there, H here and then h here all right so with this i have got i've gotten my um, condensed formula of the compound so i have this as the condensed formula of the compound so let's name this compound how do we name this compound would we'll try to recall um the rules in naming compounds which the first task would, would be get the longest continuous carbon chain if i do that for this my longest continuous carbon chain is obviously this one here this carbon chain here, the one that spans this length this way. So I have this one here as my longest continuous carbon chain. And if I count the number of carbon atoms here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten carbon atoms there. Ten carbon atoms gives me a deck. So this is a deck. Okay. So I have 10 carbon atoms, okay, to take this off. All right, so 10 carbon atoms, 10 here, gives you a deck. That's the parent's um, name for a 10 carbon atom deck. Our next task is to identify the functional group. Now, in this case, rule two is to get the functional group. In this case, I have this one here and this one here. If I look at this, these two here, I'm having a double double bond. That's I'm having two double bonds. And two double bonds gives you what's called a diene. All right. So two double bonds gives you what is called a diene. All right. When you have two double bonds, you have what is called a diene. Okay. So what's, what's next? Rule three would be, where do I do my numbering? Now, if I do my numbering, let's, let's take upper numbering from left to right. I would have here as one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. 
Let's do lower numbering from right to left. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have this. So I've done lower numbering from, I've done my upper numbering from left to right, as you can see here, and lower numbering from right to left. So the question is, which of the pattern of numbering do I take? Do I take the upper numbering or lower numbering? Now, in this case, you take the numbering that will give you the smallest possible number attached to the double bonds. Now, let me explain what I mean. If I go with upper numbering, for upper numbering, you can see that if I count, I have carbon 1, carbon 2. Now, I'm taking upper numbering. Carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, carbon 6. It is until I get to carbon 6 that I can, that I can assess the double bond. So it's more like saying from upper numbering, carbon 6 is attached to the double bond. Also, carbon 7 is attached to the double bond. So if I go with upper numbering, with the upper numbering system, I have that carbon 6 and carbon 7 bears the double bond. Now, if I go with the lower numbering, go with lower numbering, I have one that's from right to left i have one two three observe that carbon three from lower numbering um bears the double bond so you can see here also carbon four bears the second double bond so from lower number i have carbon three bearing the first double bond and carbon four bearing the second double bond so from lower numbering we have carbon three and carbon four bearing the two double bonds so in this case now, this becomes our answer. So we're going with lower numbering. Why are we going with why are we going with lower numbering? That the answer is simple because that's that gives us the least possible count. All right. Three and four is small compared to six and seven. So when it comes to choosing your pattern of numbering, whether upper or lower, you take the numbering that gives you the smaller values, which in this case is three and four, and that is lower numbering. All right, so I'm going with lower numbering. Okay, so let me take this off very quick. All right, so the lower numbering, we are going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so once you get your numbering system, you maintain it throughout the um, numbering, right? That's throughout the whole numbering of the, or throughout the whole nomenclature of this compound. All right, that's throughout the whole naming of this compound. I'll maintain the lower numbering for all of them. All right, with that being said, our next task is to identify the substituents. The substituents I have here are, starting from the um, right, I have this one here. I have a methyl. This one's a methyl here. Okay. I also have the same methyl here. So you can see that substituent here. This is a methyl. That's an alkyl group. What else do I have? I have this one here, another substituent, which is chlorine. Okay. What else do I have? Uh, moving forward, I have this one here. So I can see bromine here. Okay. Also here, you can see bromine. All right. So what next? Moving here, I can see iodine. Iodine. Also, at this point, I can see another iodine. All right, so these are like the substituents present in this compound. All right, so when it comes to naming this, which do we take first? Now, note that substituents such as bromine, chlorine, iodine, which are the halogens, are called the inorganic substituents, right? They are inorganic. Why, why substituents such as while substituents such as methyl ethyl that's the archai group are called the organic substituents so in a case like this which do i name first is it the inorganic substituents or the organic substituents now in a case like this we name the inorganic substituents first all right that's the halogen first now when it comes to naming the halogen we'll take the halogen in their alphabetical order in Alphabetical order, the first I have there should be bromine because it starts with a B. So bromine first, B. After bromine, the next one should be C, which is chlorine. I'm taking alphabetical order now. Okay. After chlorine, the next one there should be iodine. 
because it starts with an I. So I have iodine. So in alphabetical order, I have bromine, chlorine, iodine. Let's now take the organic substituents. I now have methyl. So this becomes methyl. All right, so I've arranged this. Don't forget we said all of these ones here are called the inorganic substituents. While this one here is called the organic substituent. All right. So if this is done, let's now name this compound. If this is done, let's now name this compound. So how do we name this compound? All right. Let me zoom in a bit. Let, how do you name this compound? So we are starting from which of them here? We are starting from, okay, zoom out a bit. Okay. So we are starting from, um, this way here left to right so first i have starting from bromine take bromine first taking alphabetic order bromine bromine here occurs at carbon 7 as you can see here all right and now there are two bromine so it becomes what there 7 7 dibromo all right so you have to call the position that becomes 7 7 the name here becomes so the name here becomes 7 comma 7 use a hyphen di bromo okay so we are done with bromine let's track it out so we are taking off bromine so bromine is off okay next up is chlorine looking at this chlorine is at number three all right that's carbon three as you can see here that becomes three chloro so use a hyphen hyphen three hyphen chloro three chloro next up so i'm done with chlorine i will strike it off next up i have iodine if I look at this, you can see that iodine is in carbon 9, right? So carbon 9 bears iodine. And I have two iodine. So it becomes what there? 9, 9, diiodo. The di means there are two of it. All right, so next up I have 9, 9, diiodo. 9, comma, 9, hyphen, di, okay, um, diiodo, right? So diiodo. Di iodo, so iodine is off. Next up, I have the methyl. Let's get methyl. So you can see that methyl here, we have two methyl, both attached to carbon 2. So it becomes 2 2 dimethyl, all right? That becomes 2 2 dimethyl. After 2,2 dimethyl, the methyl is off. I'm now left with the parent atom. The parent atom here is DEC, and this one was a diene, right? That's diene, okay? So let's put diene here. This was a diene. So how do you know this compound? So it becomes, so it becomes DECA. Now, when it, when it comes to naming the dienes, you show the position where the double bonds are located and in this case the double bond comes just after carbon 3 so after carbon 3 you have your first double bond and after carbon 4 you have your second double bond so it becomes deca so in diens it's called a deca not dec it's called a deca now since the double bond was on carbon 3 and 4 it becomes 3 4 diene all right so that's how you name this compound right it's called this so let's look at the name the name of this compound is 77 dibromo 3 chloro 99 diiodo 22 dimethyl dec deca 34 diene all right so this is how you name this compound all right so we also asked to find the homologous series for this compound um this we also have to find the homologous series for this compound as well as state if it is saturated or unsaturated. Now, for this compound here, the homologous series is a diene, right? A diene is simply a homologous series that has a double um, alkene, that's a double double bond or two double bonds, better put, right? So, this, this compound here has two double bonds, as you can see here. So, it's called a diene, that's the homologous series. Finally, we are asked to state if this compound here is saturated or unsaturated. 
this compound here is unsaturated. Please take note that the only saturated, um, the saturated homologous series we have is the alkanes, all right? The alkanes are saturated. And the reason why alkanes are saturated is because they have just a single bond, all right? So compounds that have double bond, such as the alkene or the diene, and compounds that have triple bond, such as the alkynes, are said to be unsaturated. So this compound is unsaturated. All right. So if you all right. So to learn more about compounds like this, like the dienes and other homologous series, simply visit my website www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses, and then look out for the organic chemistry course. All right. I've done an extensive teaching on the alkenes, the alkenes, the alkynes, the alcohols or the alkanols, the ethers, the esters, the amides, the amines, including the nomenclature, their preparations, their reactions, and etc. for lengthy period of time. All right. So if you want to get a comprehensive understanding of all the homologous series in organic chemistry, just visit my website www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses and then you can see the organic chemistry course so you can get it and then you can learn about all the homologous series from scratch and you get everything you need there all right so i'll leave a link i'll leave a link to the website in the description of this video all right so check the description of this video use so check the description of this video you'll see a link to the website all right so before you go let me give you a task you have this compound ch2 double bonded to c double bonded to ch2 so you have this compound all right so your task is this can you name this compound if yes leave the name of this compound in the comment section all right leave the name of this compound in the comment section and i'll get to your answer and tell you if you are correct all right all right so if you enjoyed this video please make sure you like this video all right leave a comment and the comment should be the name of this compound right this compound i just gave there also if it's your first time please make sure you subscribe to this channel and finally please share this content to your friends so that they can also learn Thank you and see you in our next class.